So I'm thankful for Sony for giving me the opportunity to check out this A3000 when it launches here. Got it home to unbox it and found obviously it's a bit smaller than the other sound bars in this series, although it does come with some of the same accessories. It comes with a power cord, of course, an HDMI 2.1 to connect it to your TV for the ARC and ER communication. It has the S center cord because you can connect this sound bar to your Sony OLED or LED TV so that you can use the TV for communication with the sound bar. And of course, it does come with the Sony remote. This remote has a bunch of different music services you can connect to easily with the top button. You can go from one input to another, Bluetooth. It has different sound modes that you can choose, cinema, music, and standard. It has a button for the immersive AE to be on or off. And then it has option buttons, back buttons, home, up, down, left, right, all of that. The volume button is in the center. It gets a bit confusing because it has the bass on one side, the rear speakers on the other, and the volume in the middle. But overall, it's a decent little remote. Now I have many Sony TVs as well so the remote that comes with the TV is very good and it actually controls everything about the soundbar. So if you have a Sony TV you don't have to keep both remotes around because this one will do all of it. But if you don't have a Sony OLED or LED TV, then you'll have to keep two remotes around to control it. So that's something to think about when you buy a TV of one brand and then a soundbar of another. It's nice to have that compatibility of the same product lineup. So overall, the look of this A3000, it's very similar to the A5000 with one noticeable difference, which is that it doesn't have the two upward firing speakers. So instead of having those speakers up here, you just have that matte black finish that the A5000 has. And then you also have the power and input, Bluetooth, again, the music services buttons, and an up and down volume. And for connectivity, you just have that one HDMI port that connects directly to the TV and the ARC eARC port that brings sound from your TV into this soundbar. And it does have the S center out like the other systems in the Sony lineup, which allows your TV to act as the center channel. And I really like that on these sound bars because it takes over most of the control in the center channel, but sound still does come out of the sound bar itself. And this has a nice, deep, rich bass to it. So it kind of complements this Sony OLED that I have behind me. It does have the optical in if your TV is a little bit older and you don't have the ARC or eARC, and it does have USB that can do firmware updates. The A3000 is a 3.1 channel soundbar, meaning it has a dedicated center channel, a left and right, and then it has a dual subwoofer for deep bass. You can expand the system, of course, if you want to, with two different surround sounds and two different subwoofers. The more basic RS3S speakers are just your traditional one channel speaker that will get you your normal surround sound. And the RS5s are dual channel speakers, so that means that they have sound coming out at you as surrounds and they fire upwards. So you can use either one of these sets of surround sounds in order to get the 360 spatial sound mapping technology where you can hear sound from every direction and distance. And the soundbar itself does have built-in microphones so it can optimize to your room. So you just go into the settings and hit a couple buttons and it'll auto-correct into your room and give you the best sound experience. And if you really want some solid bass, I do recommend getting one of the subwoofers as well. The SASW3 is pretty solid for this soundbar because it's probably meant for a medium or small smaller size room, but if you really need the bass, you can get the SASW5, which is the larger subwoofer, which is what I have for the HDA9 system, and it's pretty solid too. So either one of those will work in either sets of surround. So how does the HDA3000 sound? Well, it is a 3.1 system, and I hooked it up to my TV behind me and up in the bedroom to kind of get a gauge on how this sounds compared to some of the other ones. And I did notice that it's, it's a pretty solid sound overall. There's a good amount of bass that you don't get with a TV alone. So I think a lot of people that are buying TVs and they want a little bit more from their system are gonna like a soundbar like this that will add more volume to the room. I did notice that this soundbar has a pretty good heft to people's voices and just sound in general, which I like. And when connecting it to a Sony OLED with that S center out, I got a very even sound because traditionally the TVs have very good high frequency reproduction. And with this soundbar that has pretty good low frequency, it just sounded like a very clean, tall soundstage. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the sound quality, especially when connecting it to a Sony OLED. But how do you know if you should buy this A3000 or 5000 or 7000 or even the HTA9? 
The HTA3000 is $699 at retail, and it does come with a lot of new features that older soundbars didn't have, which are connectivity to those accessories that I spoke about earlier, the ability to connect to your Sony OLEDs as a center channel, and they come with the newer Sony X-Balance speakers. Not to mention they can connect to AirPlay 2, Alexa, Google, Spotify, and Chromecast. Two of the main differences between the HTA 5000 and the 3000 are that you don't have those upward firing speakers on the A3000 and you don't have an HDMI input, so you can only connect your A3000 directly to your TV. So for the extra $300 for the A5000, is it worth it for you to have those upward firing speakers and connecting other devices? So overall, I'm pretty happy with both the A3000 and the 5000 with regards to sound quality, but the fact that they're smaller and don't have as many speakers as the larger soundbars make them a little bit limited in use for me, specifically with larger rooms that we have in the house. But if you have a smaller TV or a smaller room, the A3000 might be a great option because it does look a little bit more balanced under a smaller TV where it looks a little bit small underneath this 83 inch OLED. And while the A7000 is still my favorite in the product lineup, specifically for a larger room like this, the A3000 is half the price and would be great for bedrooms or maybe even a guest bedroom, which is where I think this one's gonna end up for us. So overall, it's pretty nice that Sony has introduced a 3.1 channel soundbar, more of the entry level for some of the people that have Sony TVs or are big time Sony fans. It sort of rounds out the entire product lineup now having the A3000, the 5000, the 7000, and the HTA9. I'm interested on your guys' thoughts on having a 3.1 soundbar without upward firing speakers. Is that something that you guys would like or would you opt for the A5000?